What if I told you that study hacks on TikTok actually work? I started using TikTok a couple of months ago, and since then, it has helped me firmly adjust my attention span to goldfish. But quite surprisingly, I'm still able to learn an impressive amount of things within just 30 seconds or so, including study hacks. Hey, it's Patrick here. Hope you're doing great. I'm a PhD student at Oxford, and today I will try out some TikTok study hacks and tools so you don't have to. Let's go. Should publications be free or not be free? It's something that academics have argued since the Stone Age. There are thousands of journals in every field, and if you're part of a university, you'll probably have access to many of those. But if you don't have access, then I will try out Sci-Hub and Paper Panda. They allow you to get access to pretty much any paper you can think of, and it is completely for free. The way I understand it is that Sci-Hub has access to a number of logins, which can be used to get behind most paywalls. Once a paper is downloaded, they keep a copy, and if they don't have a copy yet, they can easily get access to one. Sounds questionable, but hey, if it's for free, it's for me. Now, Paper Panda is the same, but better. It's a Chrome extension and runs Sci-Hub in the backend. Whenever you have a paper you want to read and you cannot get access to it because it's behind a paywall, like in this example, click on the Paper Panda extension and you get that paper immediately. I'm giving this a full 5 out of 5 stars, very easy to use, completely for free, got nothing to complain. Patrick, would you take the blue pill to read the full paper? Hmm or the red pill to read the summary. <sighs> Scholarcy summarizes research papers, reports, and book chapters and breaks them down into small bite-sized sections. Let me show you how this works. First, download the Chrome extension, and second, look up any paper you want, click on the extension, and you can start exploring the summary, like here. It summarizes each section for you, and if you click on the full text, it will highlight the sections it took to generate that summary. This is definitely a very useful tool to have, but it's not a substitute for reading papers. Don't be lazy. I'm giving this a four out of five stars. I never really had issues with it, but it's not the most accurate in some cases. This is a beautiful tool. It's still in the beta phase, so you can only test it on a couple of papers, but I really hope that they add this feature with all the papers that's available on the Semantic Scholar. Two things this offers. One, if you click an in-text citation, you can see the abstract for that citation. You don't have to worry about opening a new tab to open this paper. It's very simple and very convenient. It also shows you all the other important stats, like number of citations, etc. If it's interesting, obviously you can click on the title and it will open that paper in a new window. Two, if you click on a mathematical symbol, you can see its usages throughout the paper and its definition. I would give this a full score, but because it's in the early phases and you can only test it out on a handful of papers, I'll give this a 4 out of 5 stars, but it definitely has a huge potential. I'm sure you have heard of Wolfram Alpha. It's a really great tool to get your answers to pretty much any scientific question. But the problem is you need to pay to see the working solutions. If you're working on a differential equation, for example, just go to SciMath. It's completely for free. You get all the working solutions and the answers are generated much faster than Wolfram Alpha. Not that it matters, but uh, you know. I am speed. I am giving SciMath four out of five stars. I think it's a great tool, very easy to use, very fast, completely for free, but the problem is that it is limited to only a handful of mathematical operations. That's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.